Hi there, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video we're going to take a look at some of the new features in Octane 308 for Maya. Just to give you a brief introduction, we will make this scene available for download if you want to follow along. It is called spacelimo01.ma and it consists of a happy little robot, nice space limousine, and some sci-fi structures, and a very simple plane. So, very simple scene, just something to play with while we're working in Octane. You want to make sure that you've updated your graphics drivers for your graphics cards since Octane is a GPU based uh, rendering system. So make sure your drivers are up to date. Also go to otoy.com and log in under your account, go to the downloads page and download the latest version of Octane for Maya, which you can find through this drop down menu. If you want to use the absolutely latest version, the beta release versions are are found by clicking on this link right here for release candidate testing forms. If you want to try the latest version, you can do that. Just be aware that it is a beta, so it is not as stable as the standard releases which are found on this page. So a lot has changed in Octane for Maya since previous versions. The first thing you'll notice is that we're now rendering in the viewport directly. So rather than opening up IPR and creating test renders through IPR, we can work in the perspective view and see all our lighting and shading as we work. So for example, if I switch to the perspective view, you can see I can navigate the scene and I have all my Octane lighting uh, and shading and my materials and textures. And so it makes it a lot easier makes it a lot easier to look dev your scenes while you're working. That's a great new feature. I'll switch back to my camera view. The next thing we'll take a look at is the render settings. A lot has changed in the render settings window. So if I go to Windows, Render Editors, Render Settings, the Common tab of course is the same, but if I go to the Octane Render tab, you'll see that a lot has changed down here. So for example, we can now add multiple nodes to our scene to control things like the render kernel, passes, imager, post-processor, environment, visible environment, and render layers. So for example, if I want to create different variations on any of these, uh, it's easily done using these drop-down menus. So if I go to the kernel here, I'll click on this little arrow right here. This will open up the current render kernel in the attribute editor, which I have set to direct light. Let's say I want to make it a second uh, render kernel say for using info channels. I'll go to the kernel menu here in the render settings and choose create new. This will make a new render kernel which is available in the attribute editor. Let's say I'll set this to info channel. By default it'll go to wireframe. I'm going to go down to info channels settings here and set this to Z depth. I'll set the Z depth max to like 8000. This is a fairly large scene. Or try 4,000, let's say 4,000, there we go. And then if I go to the render settings window, I can use this drop down menu to switch between those two kernels. So here's my original direct lighting kernel. And here is my new info channels kernels. And I can make in as many of these as I need to. So I can make path tracing or PMC, etc., and switch between the two as much as I want. Let's go back to kernel one. So you can do that for all of these nodes. Uh, environment is particularly useful. I'm currently using a sun and sky environment. If I click on this little arrow icon right here, it will open up the settings in the attribute editor. So I could go down here, for instance, and change the hour. If I want to have more of a nighttime scene or a daytime scene, and it'll update very quickly. Let's say I want to create a second environment, maybe one that uses an HDRI image as opposed to the sun and sky system. So I'll go to the environment menu here and click on this arrow and choose create new. By default, it will create a texture environment using a white texture for the lighting. So what I'll do is I'll go into the attribute editor for this uh, environment node and I'll click on this checker box next to texture. This will open up the create render node window and under Octane Textures, I'm going to find the Octane Image Texture. And this will open up in the Attribute Editor. I'll click on this folder icon and find my HDR image. So you can see I have kind of a sunset here. It's fairly dark. So I'm going to go into the Attribute Editor, adjust the gamma. Let's set the gamma to 1. 
and let's set the power to 2. And let's say I want to rotate this so that, that the light comes from a different direction. Uh, I'm going to go to the projection uh, field right here, click on this checker box to open up the create render node window, and under projection I'm going to choose spherical projection. Not much is going to change just yet, uh, but this will open up the spherical projection node in the attribute editor, and then I can click on this checker box next to transform, and I'll choose octane rotation transform. Now I can enter settings in the XYZ field. So let's say I put minus 90 here in the Y field. You can see it's going to rotate that texture and causing the light to come from a different direction. So I can make variations as needed. Oh, that's kind of nice. So uh, if I want to switch between those two environments, uh, I could just go to the render settings window, find my environment uh, menu here and then choose between the first one I created, Octane Sun and Sky 1, and then the second one. And this is great for quickly creating variations that you can show to your client or your art director uh, so they can weigh in on the changes that you've made. So other examples of how this flexible system now can help you to develop different variations of your scene uh, include working with the Imager node. So the Imager here controls things such as exposure, I'll click on this arrow here to open up the node in the attribute editor. You can see I can set the exposure to say like 1.5, uh, change for instance the gamma, you know, bring this down to 0.8. Uh, I can also apply different LUTs or gamma responses or color response curves using these menus. There's a variety of presets here that you can choose from. And again, if I wanted to create variations, I'll just go into the render settings and choose from this menu, create new. And so this will go to the default settings. So I'll set this to, let's say, let's go to linear off. And let's change the gamma to 2.2. I'm just kind of picking different settings here just to kind of show you the differences you can create. You'll create more of a vignette decrease the saturation, let's bring that exposure to 1.2, and so on. You get, you get the basic idea. So now I can go into this menu here and choose between the different imager settings as well as the different environment settings. And the same thing with post-processor. So I'll create a new post-processor node and turn it on in the attribute editor. I'll turn on enabled and increase the bloom power. That's a bit too much. Let's set this to two. Let's see, maybe six and increase the glare power. Let's set this to six. That's probably a bit much, but it makes it fairly obvious that it's easy to create variations. I'll change the spectral intensity and shift it a little bit. There we go. Uh, an interesting look. And now I can easily switch between the two of them. So much more flexibility built into this uh, version of Octane for Maya. And we'll take a look at some of the other new features found in Octane for Maya in the next few videos.